What's up guys? This is the fourth shelf of my wrestling collection. Uh, up first we have uh, Survivor Series 1995. Uh, this was a good pay-per-view. There were, well I mean it wasn't great but it was good. There were parts of it I liked. The Bret Hart Diesel match was amazing. The one thing I did like was the wild card Survivor Series matches where you had good guys and bad guys on each team. They just kind of drew randomly. I, I, I mean, I know they weren't completely random, but I like the idea of teams being random as you had people who hated each other on the same team and people, you know, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon and Ahmed Johnson all on the same team. You know, it's just like, whoa, you know, wild card, big time. You know, so that was a good twist for this pay-per-view. Uh, then we have one of, one, one of my more favorite Royal Rumble matches, the 1996 Royal Rumble. Uh, the match itself was great. A lot of big stars in it to where it made it like, oh, who's going to win? You know, you weren't entirely sure. Uh, the Undertaker-Bret Hart match was great. Yep, Ahmed Johnson and Double J was a good match. Same with Razor Doldus. This this was one of the more complete Royal Rumble pay-per-views where the entire card was, this whole pay-per-view was like almost watchable beyond the smoking guns and the body donnas. Uh, then you had the first In Your House of 1996. They didn't name them the In Your Houses at this point. They were still kind of doing, you know, weird titles for the releases. But this is the first uh, In Your House pay-per-view of 1996. Uh, the match between Diesel and Brett was good, only to be interrupted by, you know, The Undertaker coming out from underneath the ring to set up the match between Diesel and The Undertaker at WrestleMania, which was you know, great as far as story building and all that stuff goes. Then you have one of the better WrestleManias, in my opinion, up to this point as well. You know, Shawn Michaels versus Bret was obviously a classic, and so was Diesel versus The Undertaker. Yeah, this was the first time where The Undertaker actually had a big-time opponent that could actually work with him in the ring. Ultimate Warrior versus Hunter Selmsley was crap, and we all know why that is. Uh, Stone Cold versus Savio Vega was really good. They always seem to have good chemistry together. They they really just went at it. Roddy Piper versus Goldust, I guess, was supposed to be Goldust versus Razor Ramon, but Razor's uh, contract ended right before this uh, WrestleMania, and he went to WCW. Uh, the Godwins versus the Body Donnas and the Huckster versus the, the Macho Man were all in the free-for-all before the pay-per-view, so they weren't even really on this tape, which was, you know, why I even put them on here then if you're not going to be able to watch them as far as on the back of the cover. Then you have uh, Beware of Dog in your house. Uh, again, they were doing funky titles for for these releases. But they do have the matches on the back. You know, like I said, th that this is the best uh, Stone Cold Savio Vega match right here. The Caribbean Strap match was absolutely amazing. Yokozuna versus Vader kind of showed that Yokozuna's career was over. Undertaker and Goldust was actually surprisingly very good as well. They worked very well together. British Bulldog versus Shawn Michaels was just me. Then you have uh, King of the Ring 1996, the birth of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Beyond that, pretty much a forgettable pay-per-view. Then we have SummerSlam 1996. Uh, Vader and Sean didn't work well together. The chemistry wasn't there, so the match wasn't very good. This pay-per-view is mainly known for uh, The Undertaker versus Mankind in the Boiler Room Brawl match. You know, Sid versus the Bulldog wasn't very good either. Jake Roberts versus Jerry Lawler was bad. Uh, Savio Vega really only had good matches, as at least epic matches, with Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
And I don't even think uh, Steve Austin was on this card, which is kind of a waste of him after the King of the Ring. So yeah, that's that's weird. What a waste. Uh, then you had the Buried Alive in your house. Classic match between uh, The Undertaker and Mankind. And at this point, they were really pushing the barriers, these two, The Undertaker and Mick Foley, with what types of matches they could have. You know, Buried Alive matches, Boiler Room Brawl matches. I mean, he was just the perfect guy for The Undertaker to face at this point in time, too. You know, and then... You know, Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Steve Austin was, you know, Hunter Hearst Helmsley wasn't at his, at his peak yet. And it kind of showed in that match, but there was nothing really memorable otherwise on this pay-per-view, beyond the Buried Alive match. Then we have Survivor Series 1996, which is, in my opinion, one of the better Survivor Series as well. One of my go-to Survivor Series to watch whenever I'm in, uh, in the mood to watch a Survivor Series pay-per-view. So many good matches. The debut of The Rock. Uh, you know, you had Mick Foley versus The Undertaker. You had Psycho Sid versus uh, Shawn Michaels, which was a great match. You had Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, which was an absolute epic match. So all in all, this pay-per-view had it all. Then you had the Royal Rumble 1997. The Royal Rumble match for this pay-per-view was entertaining. It wasn't as great as 96, but it was still good. Sid and Shawn Michaels had a great match at this pay-per-view. Uh, you know, I guess Sid could work really well with just certain, certain guys. Ahmed Johnson versus Baruch was horrible. Goldust versus Hunter Selmsley. Hunter Selmsley was starting to get momentum here as far as you know, getting underneath, uh, out of, uh, underneath, uh, Vince McMahon's boot after the curtain call in 96 when Diesel and, uh, Razor Ramon left, but Undertaker and Vader was eh. Then we had the final four in your house. This is when they started to actually name or put the names of those in your houses on the actual videotapes. Uh, this match was good, this four-way match. I mean, 97 was kind of a cluster as far as what their plans were. I, it was initially supposed to be Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, but Shawn didn't, I guess, you know, at the time. Uh, wasn't in the best frame of mind to do that. So they kind of had to do it on the fly and threw everyone in there. You know... Rocky Maivia versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley was okay. People really hated the Rocky Maivia character. But I mean, otherwise, you know, Doug Furness and Philip LaFon were a good tag team too. They didn't really do much with them though. But otherwise, a pretty forgetful card right here, as you can see. Then you got WrestleMania 13. Because of you know, the curveball and having to do things on the fly. I thought that this was one of the worst, or not not the worst, but one of the worst WrestleManias I had seen. Uh, yeah, it was just you know, poorly, poorly put together, I guess you can say. Psycho Sid and The Undertaker was average, but it wasn't even supposed to be the match. You know, Bret Hart versus Steve Austin obviously was the best match on this card. Uh, the six, the Chicago Street Fight match was an entertaining match. But yeah, beyond that, you know, a lot of, again, for very forgetful matches. Then we have King of the Ring 1997 here. Uh, again, you know, they were, I don't know a lot of the matches that were on this card. I know this was the King of the Ring that Triple H won. To, and it set up to, you know, more of a feud between Mick Foley and Triple H as far as going into SummerSlam. All in all, this was kind of a forgetful pay-per-view. Not a lot really happened here. Uh, like I said, this was kind of their down period. They were, WCW was just really, really putting it to them. And you could just tell financially that they were just, they were hurting. 
And that's it for the uh, fourth shelf of my wrestling collection.